Yet only around half of all the people with super realise they have this choice. If you want to investigate shifting your super money between different assets, talk to your super fund or an advisor. In many cases, you can easily shift your money around for free. And please do note, many superannuation funds these days will let you buy and sell direct shares so you can make even more choices. Making Adelaide a better place. 1395 Adelaide 5AA. Dave Howard. Phone 8223 0000. Interactive Radio. 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. 17 past 5, Thursday morning, the 5AA Breakfast Show on the way from 5.30 with Keith Conlon and Jane Riley. Your chance to win some cash there this morning too. Selwyn Manning from New Zealand, how are you this morning? Yeah, very good, Dave. How are things over there? Not too bad, and I was just saying to you off-air, it's good to see that the Kiwis didn't take the cup home this year. <laughs> well, you know the Kiwis will do our best to take it out next year. And, uh, <laughs> uh, if, if not, we'll try breeding you some good runners so that you can, guys can have a go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now, did uh, you have a flutter on the Melbourne Cup this year? I, I missed out. It's no? the first year in ages that I've missed out on getting down there. Just uh, yeah, just trying to get down and get, get something going. But uh, traditionally, you know, it's the biggest, biggest um, day of turnover for the New Zealand TAB as well, and yeah. uh, you know, just like it over, in, um, you know, on, on your side of the ditch here in the, in the Kiwi land, if you want to put it that way, it, it grinds to a halt around that time. Yeah, so, it's unbelievable. Yeah, now, race. big news in New Zealand at the moment about these uh, young chaps who didn't get uh, uh, prosecuted. For... Yeah, and that, that... go on. Yeah, sorry, Dave. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, New Zealand police are under pressure to explain why they did not prosecute a group of male youths uh, for sex crimes against a 13-year-old girl back in 2011. Now, this 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 group of males, they formed a gang, might as well call it a gang, they, they kind of um, parade around as such, and they name themselves the Roast Busters. And they've bragged online, including on Facebook, about how they've lured underage girls into their, into their kind of group, if you want, um, and got them drunk and then had sex with them. Mm. And it, it's believed that there are a series of offences of this nature that have stretched back to 2011, um, and uh, numerous um, victims are now coming forward to media and also now having the courage to go to police. Now, one of the males is the son of a police officer here in New Zealand. And so there has been speculation, particularly in the social media, that that is one of the reasons why police haven't pursued this aggressively. The police are saying that, no, um, the reason why they have not um, t gone through with an investigation that leads to a prosecution is because they have not been able to get enough evidence. Um, that seems to be contrary to uh, what one of the girls, that one I mentioned there that was 13 two years ago uh, when the alleged crime occurred with her, um, she has come forward as a 15-year-old, obviously, mm. and she is saying that she um, took about two weeks to pluck up the courage to tell her family, and once she did, her family and her brother went to the police station, named the people involved, um, uh, she went through all of the procedures where, you know, using dolls and things like that to show what had happened to her. Yeah. Um, and the police in the end said, no, we, we haven't got a prima facie case and basically just dropped it. Now, she's feeling that, that guilt, if you like, that if she didn't kind of get a process, you know, if she didn't drive enough or give enough um, detail to get a prosecution back then, that there have been other victims since. Yeah. Now, at the moment, the police have also said, Dave, that, uh, they've been monitoring the activities of this group for two years, watching them brag on site and basically slowly building evidence. But honestly, the police are really in the gun here um, for, for not having moved earlier and what the public believes is um, justifiable reasons to take a case to court. But they're, they're online bragging within social media. and I mean, if they've been monitored for two years or so, surely the police could act on that. Yeah, th you know, this is the obvious question. You know, if it was happening in Adelaide, South Australia or anywhere, you know, you'd think, OK, the police got it enough here to basically really, really nail this case down, particularly when there are multiple alleged victims. Yeah. Um, we find out this morning that there, there are four that have already gone to police now. Um, that, you know, that only two days ago the police were saying, well, you know, they haven't had any... Um, complaints from any alleged victims. So if the, the girls had the courage to come through, were brave enough with the words that the cops used, yeah. um, then they would start an investigation. Then, of course, one sitting at home who's 15 now thinks to herself, well, actually, I, I, I 
made a complaint here, and they're yeah. saying no one did. So there's a big thing. It's even become political, you know, in the sense that uh, um, the Labour-led opposition here, um, it's um, saying that um, this isn't good enough. It's, it's putting a complaint into the police conduct authority, um, et cetera, et cetera, as, as it would. But um, generally, you know, we're even getting um, people uh, suggesting that vigilante groups be set up and kind of track these dudes down. So mm. it's getting quite serious. It's certainly concerned the news all week here, Dave. So these ro- roast busters, are they? Yeah. what age groups do they run into? What, uh... Well, they're in the later teenage years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, kind of uh, boy racer types, um, pretty... You know, flashy looking. Um, one of them's the son of a very well known uh, American actor who featured in the movie The Matrix. Okay. Uh, and on and on it goes. Um, there are others, other young men who seem to have matured, if you like, who have publicly said they were in this particular gang and they've pulled out. Mm. Um, that it's got it got out of hand, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the, these guys. Uh, you know, there's video online of them bragging because they put video of themselves bragging up on social media. That's been all over the New Zealand news. You know, people have been able to see them sitting there kind of talking to the camera about their conquest, saying basically that yes. the, these girls were, um, they knew what they were getting into, mm. et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, you're talking here, allegedly, I've got to say allegedly here, yeah. but uh, the evidence points to a 13-year-old girl yeah. um, who was one of the, perhaps one of the first victims. So what's the outcome as far as, what does it look like? It is, it looks yeah. like it's just going to be dropped. No, it looks like the cops are in a situation where they're going to have to now do something. Their hands being forced. Yeah, there's four um, um, elite victims that will come forward now that mm. are speaking very strongly on specifics, um, times, places, etc. Uh, there's... The pressure on the police to actually get things going is uh, is considerable. Now, this morning, the police are saying that they have a team um, of around 10 police looking into this. Mm. Um, so it seems to me that where things are tracking is the most likely with, well, that a, an arrest is imminent. And mm. uh, these guys have already been warned over the last two years by the police. Mm. And, you, you know, you let, let's take it out of this context. If it was you or I, you would expect, and we were offending in this way, you would expect a bit more than a warning, wouldn't you? Mm. Well, you, you know? just look at uh, all the cases around as far as even social media goes, as far mm. as online bullying goes, and mm. uh, you've got to be so careful these days what you say and do online. Yeah. And, and for it, these guys to come out and openly admit to all this, you'd think, well, hang on. <laughs> something's really wrong here. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is, you know, there's um, also this double whammy that's going on too, the sensitivity, understandably, um, on on the side of the victims and a couple of the radio talk show hosts here in New Zealand, mm. um, one that's very prominent on Radio Live, um, and that's uh, where a couple of the hosts uh, treated one of the alleged victims with less compassion than perhaps they ought to. Yeah. And there's been a huge backlash from the public on that mm. um, to the point where the hosts have kind of said, oh, I've listened to it again, perhaps they could have done it better. Mm. Um, and this type of thing, but yeah, no, it's, it's certainly a, it's been an eye up. No, I'm, no one had really heard of this thing, you know, this roast busters. Mm. But this kind of blew up and in, into the news, and it's been an, an, a media led um, issue. This with the police dragging their feet behind. It's not a mm. good one. Well, hopefully the uh, police do something about it and these guys are brought to justice because, um, yeah, it's incredible. Now, tell me about this other uh, instance with the uh, hitchhiker. Yeah, this is a bit of a lighter one, isn't it? You know, uh, now, yeah, hang on, before you get started, this is a message to all kids listening, uh, never hitchhike. <laughs> never hitchhike, good reasons for that. <laughs> now, that, over here in, in New Zealand, uh, a 25-year-old tourist from Finland, um, you know, apparently he feels really lucky to be alive after accepting a ride while hitchhiking in the north of New Zealand's North Island. So it's right up the top, hmm. nice, beautiful area, Bay of Plenty, um, sorry, um, Bay of Islands, etc., etc. Very, very, very popular a place where people come to New Zealand. Now, he was picked up by a man driving a stolen car. Now, of course, the hitchhiker didn't know it was stolen no. until he got in there, and then he hears the police sirens roaring up behind. The police had spotted the vehicle, um, but the driver, who had just picked them up, he sped off in the police, you know, with the police chasing them <laughs> behind. They got up to high speeds, Dave, around 150 kilometres an hour. Wow. With the, t- the tourist 
terrified in that passenger seat. You imagine gripping hold of the, the seat, you know, being, <laughs> the horror ride of his life, no doubt. You, you can drop uh, me here, you can drop me here. <laughs> please, let me out. Yeah, he'd be screaming out the window probably if oh, no, his hair would hair be blowing off if he got it out. But um, the, the driver... Um, the police um, were able to get some cars up ahead. They put road spikes down. The driver evaded the road spikes. Um, trucks were phoning up the police saying, this guy's nuts. He's just flown past us at high speed. Um, there were two major police chases, and they sped right through roadworks, you know, with the gravel on the road, yeah. the road workers around. It went through that at 100 kilometres an hour through the gravel. Wow. Finally pulled the car up, ditched it, and took off absolutely took off on foot. Um, police arrived a short time later. The backpacker apparently emerged out of the car absolutely shaking, to, you know, like a leaf, yeah. um, pointed out in the direction to the police where the driver took off to. Now, all of that builds up a 28-year-old man from Auckland has been charged with unlawfully taking a motor vehicle, possession of tools for conversion, driving while forbidden, dangerous driving, and reckless driving. So, <laughs> and, the, and the police tell us that the, 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 the tourist... He is shaken. He's gone to a couple of other tourist spots and he's looking forward to going. Yeah, he's going to buy himself a push bike. <laughs> he's going to get a push bike, yeah. yeah. You'd think he'd get done for uh, endangering life too because he, you know, basically picked up this hitchhiker. Is that illegal over there to pick, pick up the hitchhikers or not? Uh, no, no, it's still, okay. it's still okay. I mean, you can hitchhike on the, on the motorways, yeah. etc., but you can on the main highways. <laughs> it's a classic that. story. Yeah, so there you go, you know. <laughs> A uh, 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 yeah, story of survival. Beautiful. Anyway. Well, Selwyn, thank you once again. Peter Godfrey back next week to chat, catch up with you again and uh, some more interesting and amusing stories from New Zealand. Okay, mate. Good Take on you, Selwyn. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. 8223 that's it for me this morning. Uh, the 5AA Breakfast are in after 5.30, your chance to win some cash. Listen out for details with Keith Conlon and Jane Riley. I'll catch you tonight from midnight here at 5AA. Have a great day.